Hey guys, so I'm going to be hopping on this little outrage bandwagon for today. Yep, the Fine Brothers uh, controversy. Yes, okay, all right. So I wanted to talk about this because this is something that sort of every YouTuber has an opinion about. And I just kind of want to talk about not necessarily the Fine Brothers situation as it currently stands, and I'll explain what that is in a second, but also how I as a YouTuber sort of look at, at copyright and trademarking and the whole legal quagmire behind that, because it is something that every YouTuber that's serious about putting out videos will have some working knowledge of, but copyright law and trademark is not only incredibly complicated, but it gets more complicated when you talk about the international goings-ons of things. So anyway, for those of you that don't know, what is this this controversy of the week? Because there always seems to be one nowadays. Well, basically, the uh, YouTube channel Fine Brothers Entertainment, which is a channel I really quite like, actually, uh, and they do uh, their specialty is reaction videos. They'll get seniors or kids or teenagers to react to whatever viral video is going around at the moment or failing that some some other kind of, uh, you know, YouTube video. And uh, I'm sure you're familiar with 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 people reacting to uh, other YouTube videos in terms of that as a format. Um, and they've kind of they're the ones that have basically flagshipped it. They haven't just like came up with the format. They haven't decided that format of reacting to videos has been a around as long as YouTube itself, probably even before that. But they've certainly capitalised on the idea and they've run with it and they've they've made a very successful couple of YouTube channels out of it. So what puts them at the centre of all of this uh, controversy? Well, they have recently trademarked their brand, the React brand, and they've recently attempted to uh, franchise that brand. And what I mean by franchise that brand, it, it works in a very similar way to how McDonald's works or how they envision it to work, which is if a person wanted to... Um, maybe... Well, it seems like if someone wanted to like, start uh, maybe a YouTube channel that was in the exact same style as the React, including things like branding, music, and all the imagery and stuff like that, they could then go to the, the Fine Brothers and sort of apply for a, for a franchise, and they would then provide them the help at, obviously, a cost. Uh, and that would include branding, and that would include rights as well, legal rights to use things. And that's basically how franchises work, is that in the case of McDonald's, McDonald's is not really one big company that sweeps the entire world. Each of the McDonald's restaurants, or at least the overwhelming majority of them, are actually franchised individual businesses that have become part of the McDonald's... I'm going to use the word McDonald's family, but God, I hate that marketing speak. And then it kind of brings them into the fold. McDonald's have done this because it's a really safe way of making a hell of a lot of money. You make all the... the Store managers take basically, or all, all the uh, all the people that own the small little outlets take all of the risk, do all of the market research, and then if it all goes to hell, they're the ones that have to pick up the tab. McDonald's basically get to expand out as as, as large as they want with pretty much zero risk, and you know I can imagine that being incredibly attractive to a lot of other people. So, uh, where do the Fine Brothers come in in all of this? Well, basically, if someone wanted to set up a React channel or do a React show. Uh, or participate in possibly a larger React event, they would then possibly use their channel and franchise it off, a personal channel, uh, would then franchise off in a similar way to someone starting up a, a McDonald's uh, shop. So, um, what's all the controversy about then? Well, effectively, a lot of people are upset because they're trademarking the whole React brand whilst not actually having created the React format and not only that, but the React format kind of requires uh, a lot of fair use of other content on YouTube. Fair use, which has, again, traditionally been a very grey area, um, practically a minefield when it comes to, to, to using other people's content on, on YouTube. And as you guys are probably well aware, I use very little content that I don't create myself on this channel just, just for those reasons. And in fact, on top of that, what I try and do is, um, like this channel, for example, is called Chris Ware Digital. And the reason it's called Chris Ware Digital is because your name uh, is protected. So um, it's basically, it, it gives me that just sort of extra layer of protection, not to mention 
who's going to name a company after me and then sue me for having my name? You know, it's like it's, and, and I don't exactly have a particularly common name, so it's a nice little way to keep me in a safe zone when it comes to trademarking. I can't afford fancy lawyers and uh, and, and 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 all of that. It's just a very easy way to, to, to sort of remain in the legal safe zone. And that's generally how I've navigated the trademark world up until this point. I've always been very much in, in the uh, in the safe zone. Um, not only that as well, I mean, to be honest, I don't have any intention of, of, of um, using other people's content as a way of, uh, of, uh, of making any real money. I do have a gaming channel, but that's not monetized and to be honest, it's on a different channel. So uh, f f partly for the reasons that, it, you know, if it gets um, marked or uh, what you call it, copyright striked or shut down or whatever, you know, I, I don't really care so much about that. I'm doing that that, that channel for fun. And um, and and this channel is, is, is the channel where I sort of try and be as creative as possible, I guess. Um, and they say that Let's Plays, for example, are, are um, fair use. And, you know, I, I do Let's Plays and all that kind of stuff. But I've got to admit, it does seem like a particularly generous um, use of the term fair use. And it is. To be honest, I think if push comes to shove, the idea of the Let's Play would probably not hold up in a, in a, in a court. Or um, it wouldn't have held up in a court several years ago when the format was significantly more rare. The fact that Let's Plays seem to, like every other person seems to have a Let's Play channel now, seems to imply that there's a, a precedent of, of not going after Let's Players. Although, again, incredibly complicated because you've got people like Sega and Nintendo and Warner Brothers taking down other people's videos that seem to be in that fair use area. So it's, it seems to be inconsistently applied. Now, this goes another layer deep, and I apologise if I've, I've confused anyone so far, because, and to be honest, I don't think there's even a clearer way for me to explain this. But it gets a level deeper, because YouTube enforced their own copyright rules on top of that. So not only do YouTubers, no matter where in the world you're from, you have to abide by uh, United States legislation. So you have to know United States, United States copyright law, I have to know the European uh, copyright law as well because I, you know, obviously don't need to take the, can't take the risk, or I need to be aware of it, or I need to be cautious of it because I can't then take the risk because it could still come back to me because I'm a, I'm a European citizen. In fact, it would be significantly more difficult for someone from the states to prosecute me for a copyright infringement than it would be if, um, than for like a European person to to uh, to try and sue me for it. Okay, so YouTube basically implement their own copyright rules on top of the United States copyright rules that I have to be at least aware of and have a working knowledge of. And on top of that, I've got my own law that covers my country as well. And these are just the, 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 the places where the rules are even coming from. We're not even, you know, we're not even, you know, we haven't even scratched the surface at this stage. Now, I think people are particularly annoyed at the Fine Brothers because other companies that have tried to do this have done so in, in uh, incredibly harmful ways. Uh, you want to look at companies like Sony and Nintendo and Warner Brothers, and they uh, very aggressively go after uh, Let's Play. Or oh, actually, let's leave Let's Play out of this because I do think that Let's Play is a very, very, very grey area. When you're only playing a game and you're only talking on top of it very much like how I do, um, it's, it's, it's very much uh, a grey area because you can't then take away that game, just have the gameplay commentary and have that stand on its own, which is kind of um, one, of the, one of the sort of tenets of free use is, is that uh, it, it, it can't be the central focus of the, the overall works. Um, so, like, for example, uh, if you're just showing it as part of a montage um, as a demonstration of something, uh, that would be fine, providing you don't use too much of it. Um, and then in the case of uh, something like um, critiques, that's explicitly covered. That's ex like journalistic reasons are, are explicitly covered uh, in fair use policy to, uh, to protect journalists and to protect the press, which, again, makes a lot of sense as an explicit exception. I think it's very hard to say that things like Let's Plays are journalistic or critical or anything like that, <laughs> least of all mine anyway. So anyway, getting off track. Um, so even though historically the Fine Brothers 
have been uh, pretty good YouTube citizens, uh, they are now doing something which has been done by other people before, and the people before that have done it have 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 upset a lot of people. So a lot of people are effectively fearing the worst, and and you know that just sorts of uh, spirals things out of control, doesn't it? So how do I feel about all of this? Well, my opinion isn't particularly strong. I'm really sort of taking an interest in this as a industry phenomena, really. It's something that I'd like to be aware of because it's, again, in the same sort of sphere as, as, as a lot of what I do here as well. Um, and not even just this channel specifically. I do a lot of camera work and I help people with other YouTube channels. And God, I, I, one of these days I'm going to do a video where I actually list all of the YouTube channels that I, I sort of have a, a managerial role in or hire because um, some of them are actually quite interesting, but they're quite specialized niche or even in some cases geographically very local. Um, so they aren't something that I talk about very much on this particular channel, but uh, maybe one day I'll, I'll give you a full tour. That being said, though... Um, yeah, it's all interesting from an industry point of view, but where my opinion does sort of come into it is in the way that it's all been handled. Because, uh, again, I, PR is, is something, again, that I'm heavily involved with, not just with um, this space here on, uh, you know, on the internet, but also in, in you know, my career in politics. And it's always interesting to see how uh, PR disasters are, are dealt with and, and how damage control works and all this kind of stuff. And the one big thing that I have learned about all of this is that you can't unpiss off the internet. That's that's the that's like the that's the observation number one, right? Is that you can't you can't kick off a controversy controversy and then and then control it on the internet. I think I think at that point it sort of spiraled out of control like some kind of uh weather disaster. It's um it really it, it it involves people admitting that they've misunderstood something and and people particularly on a large scale just can't do that especially when they've got someone to 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 the side of them telling them that they're right and agreeing with them and getting just as angry as them uh it just kind of reinforces this kind of uh mentality of only ever charging forward with your opinion never questioning it um so so you can never unpiss off the internet the fine brothers should just lay down the gauntlet and say <laughs> get a hell i don't know oh, who cares right anyway so so the thing that gets me about this and it doesn't get me too much but it does irritate me is that it does seem to be a very patronizing way of of, of there seems to be a very patronizing um very patronizing language seems to be being used and it's not just the fine brothers are doing it i see a lot of on the larger side a hundred thousand uh subscriber plus youtubers uh starting to use a lot more of this this marketing uh jargon lingo do you know what i mean see if the fine brothers had explained that they're franchising out their business there would have been a lot less controversy because it's it's something that's been done time and time and time and time again but by trying to explain that by franchising your business you're actually you're doing them a favor you're doing your your viewers a favor people feel patronized people feel led on people feel like they're being bullshitted and they are because everyone knows that i like find brothers entertainment it's a business you're there to make money fine brilliant have at it just just don't don't try and pretend that you're making videos for our benefit you know it's it's it, it just it's just patronizing it really is and i think people do feel particularly talked down to because because we're we're being sold this this idea as something that it's not it's it's disingenuous and it's not just this particular situation or it's not just it's just that it's when it's when big youtubers use the word community right because I really don't like it. some YouTubers and some YouTube channels do have communities, right? But when I talk about the community on this channel, just to clarify, I talk about the open source community. I talk about you know the Linux community. I don't I don't have this little bubble that I live in that you know 
that a lot of other YouTubers do. The community, when I talk about the community, I am talking about the Linux, the open source community. I'm talking about all the other YouTubers that get excited about Linux distributions and Linux software. I am including all of that when I say the, the term community. I mean it in a literal sense of the word. A lot of YouTubers just mean it as a way to refer to their viewers as a way to patronizingly make their viewers feel included, or at least that's the intention. It's like, oh no, you're you're not my, well, you know, you're not you're not watching me. You're not you're not you're not a viewer. You're not consuming my content. You're you're part of my content. You're you're part of the community. Come on in, come on in, come on in. Yeah, yeah, you're important. You are. You're a special snowflake. Yes, you're not a customer. You are part of the community. You're part of this, and it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit, right? So let's just call it what it is, and we'll have more respect for each other. And it's, you know, it's like other YouTubers as well that use terms like um, affordable when what they really mean is cheap. That's another one that gets me, is that when you do consumer reviews, is, is something affordable or is it cheap? You know, is it, is it good? Does it cost less? You know, can you afford it? You know, affordable, affordable. It just takes, it takes the, it takes the, the, the hard corners off, off the word, doesn't it? It's not cheap, it's affordable. It's just a way of selling, you know, cheap stuff, making it sound more, I don't know. It's polishing a turd, isn't it, guys? It's polishing a turd. And uh, I think a lot of people are getting a bit annoyed at it. Uh, and I think that it's, it's, it's bringing out an, uh, an ugly side in a lot of people um, as a result of frustration, as a result of disrespect, and as a result of being talked down to by what is turning into a largely highly corporatized world where people are trying to make a hell of a lot of money under the guise of <laughs> not being a business or not being, well, making a lot of money under the guise of not making a lot of money, I suppose it is. And I say a lot of money, it's not always a lot of money. I mean, I know YouTube pay pays next to nothing. And, um, and and in a lot of cases, it's... Um, it's uh, you're getting screwed over for not much money. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I do apologise for ranting. Um, I don't do it very often, I hope. But... Um, and, and you guys could completely disagree with everything that I've actually said there. But it is something I wanted to get off my chest. I do feel that in this day and age, um, particularly online, I feel that there's a lot of bullshit there. And I kind of feel that, that people are being led on or people are being sold a, f a disingenuous bill, bill of goods by a lot of, a lot of people. Um, and... And I'm not entirely comfortable with it. So anyway, that's just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Uh, this audio is going on SoundCloud as well as YouTube. So I will put a link to the SoundCloud and the SoundCloud RSS down in the description below. Thank you very much for listening and or watching. You guys are absolutely awesome for putting up with this probably quite annoying rant, if I'm honest. Um, that's about it for me today. Until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been awesome. Take care now.